imagine you are a writer and you pen down a few fantasy stories about guns, killings and claim of multi-million dollar insurance. But would you ever imagine converting that fantasy to reality while well, this woman did? Hello mysterious family welcome and welcome back to mysterious mariam this is mariam ahsan and today we are going to talk about the murder of daniel brophy before getting into today's case let me put forward a fair disclaimer that this video is for educational purposes only and all the information in today's video is taken from the sources present online let's get started Daniel Craig Brophy was born on June 27, 1954 in Valley City, North Dakota, US. He was a chef, very passionate about cooking. His background in food spanned more than 50 years and his first job was in a restaurant where he had also worked as a lead chef instructor later on. Brophy's faculty page described him as an expert in marine biology, master gardener and mushroom expert and the most active faculty member leading field trips, organizing students projects and speaking in the community. He had taken students on mushroom hunting trips, dabbled in beekeeping and was an avid gardener. Daniel whose nickname was Dan uh, was Uh, first married and had a son from that marriage during 1990s he was working as an instructor at western culinary institute which was later renamed the lee cordon blue college of culinary arts which is now closed that's where he met his second wife nancy crampton brophy Nancy Crampton Brophy was born in Wichita Falls, Texas on June 16, 1950. She married a police officer, but their marriage shattered ultimately. She has said that it's unclear why that marriage sputtered. Ready for a fresh start, Crampton Brophy said that she moved from Texas to Oregon in 1990 or 1991 where she enrolled at now closed Western Culinary Institute, the same institute where Dan was serving as an instructor. There she met Dan Brophy it was her first class and Dan's first term as an instructor the couple born 9 days and 4 years apart in June were friends at first records show Daniel Brophy divorced his first wife in 1994 and was largely estranged from their son as he grew up i think we can speculate the reason maybe Crampton Brophy the older of the two was first struck by his intelligence she said and was later wooed by his well obviously who wouldn't want a hot meal on their table without having to go through the trouble of making it and that too by such a skillful person and describing the moment she decided to marry daniel brophy crampton wrote on her website that her husband's mantra was life is a science project well read the rest for yourself by pausing the video after graduating from the culinary school crampton brophy spent years dabbling in literary crafts and joining local writers group though she had published her first pamphlet in college and had some experience with technical writing she She didn't attempt a major try in writing because according to her she was never into writing for money and was only drawn to this habit In 1999, eight years after they met, they held a large marriage ceremony and began referring each other as husband and wife. Although they neglected to file the legal paperwork until June 14, 2016, which is a very interesting fact. According to a 1999 tax return presented in court, Crampton Brophy was running chef to door catering in Northwest Portland for 10 years, with 25 employees working under her. But her business crashed down in September 2001. one when the whole world's economy was suffering she had to cut down her number of employees from 25 to 15 Crampton until now was writing in non-fictional style about how to be a writer mostly her most interesting piece was a blog post titled how to murder your husband which she wrote on November 4 2011 this article was the reason this case went so viral i will link the article down below in case you want to go through it she listed down all the motives as why a wife should kill her husband and then she went ahead to describe the way how this should be done in a 2012 interview with blog romancing the genres crampton brophy was asked why she was attracted to romantic suspense she said murder mayhem and gore seem to come naturally to me she said which means my husband has learned to sleep with one eye open in 2013 she published her first in a series of five linked fictional romance novels her wrong series included 
did the wrong brother the wrong hero the wrong cop the wrong lover the wrong husband and the wrong seal these books mostly revolved around guns killings and multi million dollars insurance at one instance crampton profies nine self published novels most of which have less than a dozen reviews each on amazon netted very little income her book the wrong husband was most interesting which revolved around a guy which had to hunt for the presumed dead woman and to prove that body to be his wife's dead body to collect on multi million dollar insurance policy dan and nancy's married life appeared idyllic to everyone they were happy together they were spending a quiet life in portland suburbs where they had chicken in their backyards hot meals were served every night and a fabulous vegetable garden bloomed planted by dan as much as they were a perfect couple from outside cracks started forming when it came to the couple's financial situation crampton didn't have much of the job on her hand and dan's job was not paying enough to pay for crampton's need crampton profy wanted to sell their home and travel the world but dan profy was not easy to convince he was a simple man who wanted to stay back and hunt for mushrooms until he turned 93 They were living on month to month budget. But despite this dire financial situation, Nancy Brophy ensured that she paid the life insurance premiums every month. In fact, she paid over $16,000 in insurance premiums in 2017 while they fell over $6,000 behind in mortgage payments the same year. They even were in around $39,000 credit card debt which Crampton made Dan pay from almost half of his retirement savings. Dan Brophy was 63 year old at this point and Nancy was 71 Let's get to June 2nd, 2018. Clarinda Perez, a student of Dan Brophy, entered Oregon Culinary Institute but found it the entrance locked. It was uncommon for students' entrance to be locked. She also noticed that the garage door to the storeroom was open, lights were on and water was running. Students were not allowed to enter through the garage door because it was an area only accessible with permission from instructors. Another staff member came and they opened the door. She went inside and found that coffee maker usually set up was not filled. Clarinda went into one of the kitchens to get water to start the large pot of the coffee when she saw Chef Brophy on the floor. He was laying on the floor by the sink. She noticed that one of the bench tables was askew. Perez was a medical assistant in 2018, so she checked to see if Dan had any sort of response. Unsure if he had just fallen or was in some sort of medical distress, stress she did not get a response from him and called for someone to dial 911 before turning back to him and beginning chest compression she felt that his chest was squishy and thought that she had broken a rib because as she continued to do compressions her hands started getting full of blood kathleen dooley another student called 911 at 8:24 in the morning press continued compressions until paramedics arrived paramedics arrived at culinary institute at 8:27 they noticed that they Daniel was still warm and had no sign of rigor mortis or lividity so they began resuscitation efforts while removing Dan's shirt a paramedic noticed a scratch on his chest this scratch was from a gunshot wound because with gunshot wounds sometimes the bullet will enter the body and entry wound will close a little so the wound will appear as a scratch paramedics also found two shell casings this told them a couple of things first they needed to call the police immediately and second Dan's cardiac arrest was not a medical event then was soon pronounced dead police was immediately called and investigation to the murder of Dan Brophy began detectives determined that he was shot in the back while using a classroom sink in preparation for a live fire day where students would simulate working in a restaurant investigators on finding out the storeroom's garage door open primarily speculated that this might be the doing of some homeless guy as homelessness in a neighborhood escalated in the years leading up to this killing and a lot of homeless guys were spotted around the institute they speculated that some random person saw his garage door open and found it to be a perfect opportunity of burglary and this burglary went wrong but this speculation turned out to be wrong as medical examiner found 77 dollar in dan's pocket his keychain was attached to his belt investigators at the scene also found dan's wallet which contained credit cards and identification and that his pickup was parked outside the building furthermore cool's shelf of beer and liquor hadn't been disturbed and none of the institute's expensive equipment appeared
appear to have been taken so if it had been someone who came in with the intention of stealing why nothing went missing so someone living in a nearby encampment or one of the roughly 20 students present when brophy's body was found could have pulled the trigger Three months into the investigation, police suddenly arrested Nancy Crampton Brophy on the charges of murder of Dan Brophy and possession of a weapon. She had to wait four years for trial due to all virus problem going on. Her trial started on April 4, 2022. This case was prosecuted by Sean Overstreet. Judge Ramros ruled out the notorious blog article because of which this case went viral as an evidence even before jury entered the courtroom. He stated, any value in it substantially outweighed by the danger of an article written that long ago of an unfair prejudice and confusion of the issue. Now, to make sense of what happened on 2nd June, according to the detectives, I will explain coming sequence according to what happened in trials. So, around 7.15ish that morning, Daniel entered his classroom in Oregon Culinary Institute because he had to make some preparation before his class started. The class had to have some simulation of a restaurant that day. He was working at a sink when someone from the storeroom door entered the room and shot him in the chest. Daniel fell on the floor when killer fired another shot in his spine. Crampton Brophy wasn't arrested until months after her husband's death. Authorities identified her as a suspect hours after the killing. Investigators located surveillance footage showing a silver Toyota minivan that matched Crampton Brophy's. It was cruising the streets outside the culinary school during the 15 minutes window between when police believe her husband arrived at the school and when students discovered his body. Another suspicion arose when detectives found out that Crampton Brophy only called her husband twice and sent one text message after learning of police activity at school. I mean, it's your husband, love of your life. What was the guarantee that he was okay when you live only at few minutes drive from his workplace? Karen Brophy, Dan's mother, said Crampton Brophy had initially told her that she wasn't planning on driving to school despite her inability to reach her husband via phone. She said it didn't sound like she was panicked and when her daughter-in-law called back to say she would visit the school, she sounded resigned. Eventually, she arrived at the school when detectives told Nancy her husband was dead. She responded, yeah, I got that, that when everybody gave me that sad sack look. She didn't tell detectives that she had driven near culinary school at the time her husband was shot. Instead, Crampton Brophy told detectives that she had been in the bed all morning writing when they asked her where she was at the time of shooting. Later in the court, Crampton Brophy and a psychologist called by the defense said that she very conveniently suffered retrograde amnesia from the trauma of learning her husband had been killed. The condition erased Crampton Brophy's memory of June 2nd that she had driven to the streets directly adjacent to the school at the time. I really like Prosecutor Over Street's response to this when he asked Crampton Brophy how could she be sure that she didn't shoot her husband and then simply forget that too. Crampton Brophy, after seeing surveillance footage, seeing no way out, said, Oh, this surveillance footage eventually triggered my memory memory of my presence near the school. She said she was there by mere coincidence. She was driving around the area, jotting down ideas of a story because she liked the neighborhood for inspiration. She had parked her car in the area to pen down to paper. She felt safe writing in a neighborhood parking lot despite increasing homelessness and drug activity in the area. Her neighbor, Don McConnell, told that she didn't appear to be upset in the wake of uh, Brophy's death. He said seeing her taking it well, he thought maybe some people can handle things better than others as Campton Brophy kept herself busy preparing to move out of her house. Even after she told him that I am a suspect, he said, I just thought, oh yeah, well, they always suspect the opposite spouse. Another neighbor recalled Campton Brophy saying that her husband's death had lingered and a move out of the house seemed her best chance at escape as Dan's side of bed was haunting her. Maybe it was her guilty conscience. Later, Crampton Brophy called one of the police detectives saying if he could write down a letter for her, clearing her out as a suspect as insurance company would not pay
pay her insurance money. The cop declined her request, saying, We would never do something like this. Prosecutors noted that one of Crampton Profi's first acts after killing was to find an other home for Chef's beloved chickens. The house that couple shared ended up selling for $565,000, which resulted in $200,000 in profit. Detectives found out a record that showed Crampton Profi bought a Glock handgun barrel and an unregistered ghost gun kit on eBay on February 28, 2018, few months before killing. She said she bought these to help inspire a novel about a woman who assembled a gun piece by piece to fend off a threatening ex-lover. Come on! I'm a writer too. I would rather Google such things than going on buying such stuff. Prosecutors alleged Crampton Brophy used a Glock she purchased at a gun show to shoot her husband, swapping in a gun barrel that she got online. Then she put the original ba- barrel back and disposed of the second one which she bought online to prevent police from identifying the murder weapon. Let me make it easy for you. Crampton swapped the barrel of Glock gun that she owned with new barrel which she bought online. This way, if she fired the gun, the new barrel bullet shell casings would not match with the original gun barrel and if any time police tested her gun to match the shell casing, they would rule out her gun as a murder weapon because her gun would now have the original barrel. She even went twice to a shooting range to practice shooting. When this gun matter came up in the court, Crampton commented, I'm kind of obsessed with these gun parts and I'm kind of amazed at how obsessed I am. Hmm obsession it is. Crampton said she has no idea what happened to the missing barrel. She last saw it on the floor of her closet in February or March of 2018. That missing barrel is never found. Prosecutors said that Nancy killed her husband to collect $1.4 $1.4 million from 10 life insurance policies. The couple was paying more than $1,000 a month for life insurance. On that, Crampton bought $1,500 worth of gun parts while missing mortgage payments and had drained nearly half of Dan's retirement savings to pay down credit card debt. One of Crampton's inmate, Andrea Jacob, told the detective that Crampton has once confessed to her that I was this far away when the shooting happened, using her arms to signal the shooting was at a close range. Crampton Brophy was found guilty of second-degree murder on June 13, 2022. A jury found that she shot her husband in 2018 for $1.5 million life insurance payout. Nancy Crampton was sentenced to life in prison for the shooting death of Daniel Brophy with the possibility of parole in 25 years, which means she is never going to get out of the jail in her lifetime. We really have to understand, taking a life never pay good. Anyways, stay safe and I will see you next week, inshallah. Bye.